Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I want to show you guys how we're going to make this style of pendant or necklace. You can build it out into a chain with bead links and chain mail links and you know pre-bought charms or just chain or uh, seed beads, just however you want to. We're just going to be focusing on making this component here, which is also an excellent base for if you're into electroforming, but that's not at all required. And if you don't have an oven or, or <laughs> polymer clay, like how we're here we're using, this is copper toned. Um, Primo Sculpey. It's I like a clay that's a little bit firmer but not too hard to work with because my hands have been hurting me here lately. Uh, and so if you don't have an oven and don't want to use polymer clay, you can also use the product. Let me grab it for you. You can use Epoxy Sculpt by Aves Studios. They it, This is an amazing product, you guys. It's a I've had this one for a while. It doesn't go bad whenever it's just sitting on the shelf. Like I've had these for years and uh, cause I'd bought them in bulk and I still use them. So you just crack them open. They have them in a couple of different colors. Links to everything, including recommended materials are down in the video description if you guys are interested in that. Um, but if you have something that you don't want to risk baking, like maybe uh, you cast a shell out of resin and you don't want to risk baking it, but you want to have this cool uh, effect on there or if you have a shell that you, you just don't want to bake it just because it you know uh I, I don't know a whole lot about this the depth of my ignorance is astounding um but I don't know if you know whenever you bake a shell can exposure to heat 275 degrees Fahrenheit change the color or make it more brittle um if it's like I, I don't know just I don't know if you don't feel comfortable baking in an oven I do recommend the epoxy sculpt techniques and everything will be more or less the same except for with the epoxy sculpt you'll mix you know you'll follow the instructions and mix like two equal parts of it but with the primo sculpty we are just going to be using a, around a quarter of an ounce or an eighth of an ounce there we go just a little bit it doesn't take a whole lot so i'm just breaking it apart you don't even need a pasta machine or anything like that we're just going to start getting this conditioned and I really like to kind of just fold and smush, kind of like kneading a really, really dense dough. But my favorite technique, I call the fold and roll. So you roll it, fold it, roll it, fold and roll, fold and roll. And it just keeps folding into itself. But the heat from your hands starts making it much more malleable. And then I'm going to be incorporating one of these cabochons. That we make uh, in our kiln that's fused glass. Um, our website is backtoearthcreations.com. If you're interested in getting some uh, unique handmade jewelry or cabochons for yourself, we do like craft along kits and booty boxes and all sorts of different stuff over there. But uh, again, information for all that is down in the video description. But we are just going to be folding and rolling, getting that nice and conditioned. Um, you could use whatever color of clay that you like. Um, they paint it. I just threw that on the floor and it's going to have so much dog hair in it. Oh my god. Alright, well, <laughs> this is what we do. Oh my gosh, it's not even that bad. <laughs> Thank goodness. So if you get a little dog fur on it, it's fine. I just mix it in. Pick off as much as you can. <laughs> And just mix it in oh man I've had that happen before and it comes up and it just looks like a dust bunny <laughs> so it just adds strength like it's a it's like the meshing fibers of fur <laughs> or something but yeah um it takes paint really well after it's been baked I like to paint after it's been baked that way uh you know I can just paint it and seal it and be done and so now that we have our grape-sized ball, that'd be a pretty big grape though, um, of clay, we are going to take, this is 16 gauge, let's use 18 gauge. You could use 16. I'm gonna show you a few more examples. Sorry, my brain's a little scattered. I try to use the thickest wire that I can fit through the bead on a piece. So we're gonna zoom in here and you can see how we wrapped around the side of the shell and if you have a shell that's accommodating to this um, you can go ahead and do that I'm going to show you 
how to do that here on this one but for ones like this piece here um, you can see I kind of just made the ring and then I'd actually brought it around through like the center spine and just there's different ways that you can just kind of tuck things in. I put in some little faceted crystal, like some little crystal points from whenever we went crystal mining that were a little too small to wire wrap or do other things like that with, but are just perfect, I think, for accenting a piece like this. And then this one here, you can see we just kind of bent it off to the side and then used the polymer clay to cover up the spots. This is one of my favorite designs when we teach in person to introduce folks to polymer clay because with a couple of different you know nifty tools and things like you can have um, the tip of a pen that if you take the little ink part out it makes a really cool little bloop thing that you can poke stuff into. I like to use some different leather working tools myself and I'm going to grab those and show you. So these are some of my favorite tools. These are called cedars, like S-E-E-D-E-R. And they are, let me see, and this is a porcupine quill. And I like it because it's flexible and there's no risk of me scratching or gouging a stone or a shell with it because it's, you know, it's por porcupine. It's like fingernail material almost, I guess. Like, I'm guessing at that. I think it's keratin, but um, it's definitely supple and zooming in so we can see the tips of these a little better so you can see they leave a really cool indent so this one here the very very small tip is i'm just going to call it the small cedar you can see whenever you press you can get a lot of really cool stacked detail with that then we also have, this is our medium cedar, and probably my favorite. If I had to pick one, it'd be this one, because I do like the kind of texture that it leaves around the edges, like a little bit of toothed markings. Um, and then our large cedar, which I think is just like the medium one, but um, leaves a little bit bolder of an edge. So I think that does it, between these three, I really like the effects that it gets with like kind of an anemone or something. And this is wonderful practice too, because all of this work that we're doing, we can just smush together. And I wanted to demonstrate just a little bit more here with our porcupine quill. We can, depending on how deep we press, we can get different effects with just some little texturing. So we could do really deep dots and then come in and just kind of stipple and fill in. We can also use the other end of our porcupine quill, which is a little bit more irregular, but we can poke and stack and get a nice different effect with that. I also have a porcupine quill, oh, that one's all boogery on the end. Um, oh, here it is. This one has like my favorite end and each porcupine quill is gonna be a little bit different, but I mean, go outside and like find some sticks or something and poke it into some clay and see what happens. You might like uh, you can actually make some of your own texturing tools by whittling wood or uh, sculpting uh, with clay to make something that's the shape of the effect that you want to get. So the sky's the limit on a lot of this stuff. We also have a little tool over here that is like a fine ball tool tip. So any clay tool, sculpting tools or you know anything like that you could just as easily use the tip of a pencil um and so there are also let me zoom out and find another tool for you so here we have this is a wire like just brush tool that's uh it's a little less accurate than using the porcupine quill, but whenever you poke with it, you can stipple and very quickly get a whole lot of like a nice background texture, like that. And then I really like using these ball stylus in different sizes for getting kind of a hammered, almost an older coral 
effect and this is one of my when it just from the perspective of making like a mermaid themed thing I think this looks like a very old eroded coral or uh, like a coral that parrotfish have been chewing on for a while or something <laughs> um, and I do recommend that you just grab what it like pause the video grab whatever tools or you know things that you think you might work out like an old fork or something or pencils pens like whatever you have go and grab those and practice along with me just making different effects and things um, because what we practice here will come into play on this piece so I really like this as a background um, or like a sea sponge or... and then this one has small on one end and large on the other so again just practice a little bit more with different pressures as well sometimes I like to go through with a nice firm pressure and sometimes I like to go through with the small smaller ball tip and just poke 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 you can probably hear my washing machine in the background sorry I'm a youtuber but I got chores to do <laughs> like so here we go but yeah, you can get different effects and stuff, but uh, let's roll that all out now and practice just doing a little scene. So we're going to start with the very large. Let me scooch the tripod. We're going to zoom in just a bit. There we go. Not quite so extreme as before. I'm just going to ground this into the table and... Just stippling as randomly as possible. And this is a great beginner's polymer clay project because there's no wrong way to make something that looks organic. Nature does infinite variations of, you know, just nature and nurture and, you know, the environmental effects of like erosion and, you know, who knows what else. But you can get some nice texturing that way with the large ball tip. And then over here, I'm going to do just a little bit more, kind of come up and through. I'm really afraid of making it look like a butt, <laughs> so I'm going to just make one side a little bit more textured. And then we can come in here and do a little bit more. Just poking, stippling through. There's no wrong way to do it. Like, I can't emphasize that enough. And we're just practicing right now anyways. And we can come through and do some little pokey holes, I guess, with our wire brush. And so you can kind of now look at these together and have a rougher idea of what textures you might want to bring into your jewelry piece. And now I am going to take just a pinch off the back of this, smush it together, make it turn it like that. Nobody will even know. <laughs> and I'm going to take off just a little round of this because one of my favorite things to do with the cedar tools is to make some different, just pinching off a little bit of the clay and making it into a little round and then just pressing. And we can make like a little cluster. You can cut them in half. I use my fingernails for that a lot. And I'm just making a little cluster of dots here. And then when it gets to a point that I just start using my fingernails entirely, you could use like a craft knife or something if you want to break off some smaller little pieces. But polymer clay is so, so forgiving. And it's such a fun uh, medium to experiment with. You can mix and blend colors to infinite variation. And again, it paints really well and you can use like mica powders and stuff. So there's just a little bit of texture, which already super cool, I love it. But we can come through and on this larger one, we can use this cedar here. Let's zoom in a bit more. I always get kind of risky whenever it's a, uh, zoomed in real tight because I don't want to wander out of frame, but hopefully this will be nice. So there was our large cedar. Here's our medium cedar. 
And then on these other ones, we can do our small cedar, kind of just poking. And that's probably, that's probably one of my favorites, just because it looks like a little, like, I don't know, something, like, boop. So cute. I love it. <laughs> and then we can use our ball stylus tool. I like the medium one for kind of just doming it out a little bit. And you can just use your imagination or feel free to, uh, you know, as many references as you can find, like for, you know, sea life or coral scenes or anything like that. Or like alien scapes or something. And you can poke little holes in the middle. Like, all sorts of stuff, y'all. And then we can come through with our porcupine quill and do some different texturing. And before you know it, it can start looking like all sorts of different textures just living together. We're just gonna smush all that back together and we are going to build the wire frame for attaching to our shell. Because it's the whole point of uh, whenever I'm designing a piece of jewelry is I want it to hold together. <laughs> Like, if nothing else, because I can't guarantee that it's going to look exactly like how I want or anything like that, but if I can make sure that it is structurally sound, everything else from there is just for fun. So, let's see. I'm going to use, I have a ring mandrel, but if you don't have one, don't sweat it. You can use, like, the neck of a bottle, um, a cooking spoon handle, um, and, like, I don't know anything <laughs> so it doesn't have to be round you guys you could use like uh oh i really like those chessic dice containers like this little this little thing would have worked perfect too just anything that you can wrap your wire around um this is 18 gauge copper core uh pa from para wire so it's a craft wire it's copper with a silver plating that it's then been covered in like their non-tarnish like enameling. I don't really know what the terminology is, but I swear by this stuff. I've been using it for over a decade in all of my work and it ages really well. Um, this is the titanium toned uh, silver plated and uh, craft wire, but um, it comes in a wide variety of colors and stuff too. I, stri I, I usually look for dead soft wire if your wire, like if you're on Rio Grande or something and it says what hardness to use. Dead soft's really nice. You can work hard in it, but I don't want something that's going to have a whole lot of spring back. And while Parawire, this is not sponsored by the way, I just really enjoy their products. Um, Parawire doesn't sell their craft wire as like dead soft or half hard or full hard or anything, but in my experience, it falls about between dead soft and half hard. You know, it's not as soft as it could possibly be because, you know, it does go through some process and getting spooled up and stuff, and that work hardens it. Um, but it doesn't have a whole lot of spring like you can see whenever i wrapped that around the ring mandrel it didn't go like boing and like spring back out so if you're finding that like if you have wire and you don't know if it's dead soft or full hard or whatever if you're if you try to make like a little spiral with it and it goes like let's demonstrate that's gonna make more sense so if you take your pliers and your wires and make a spiral and when you do that twist, whenever you move your pliers, if it keeps its shape-ish, but like springs back out, uh, you're probably working with a half hard or full hard wire. So you want something that stays where you put it on a piece like this. Just, I mean, that's what I'd recommend if you're just starting to get into wire wrapping. So you do you though. Um, okay, so we are here. We have our full circle plus some. Not quite two full rotations, but I am going to come in and you could do a little bit of coiling or add a bead or things like that. I'm not going to worry about that just yet. Um, I just wanted to ease you guys into, because I really just did the coiling to keep the bead centered. Um, but I just want to go over doing the initial shaping. So you can see here how I have grabbed the wire. And I'm actually going to open this up just a little bit more so that maybe you can see the distinctions between the wires. And I'm going to take this, holding very firmly with my flat nose pliers, and I'm going to bend a 90 degree that away. Yep. Just like that. 
and I want that to be, this is going to be the wire that whoop, comes through there. Actually, it's going to be the other way because I like the wire to sit towards the back of the piece because whenever you're wearing this, I want it to sit flat against the skin. Like uh, here you can see on this one, how the shell is offset forward on the piece. And I just think that makes it more comfortable to wear. And so now I'm going to look at this and kind of gauge. Each shell is going to be different. So I kind of want to just gauge for myself where the center line is. And I'm going to do the bend right here. So we're going to move the shell out of the way. And I'm going to hold it. Ooh, I was about to bend it off in the other direction. Nope, I want to bend in the same direction. <laughs> there we are getting nice and firm with that and you can come in and make sure that that's nice and flat by squaring it off with your pliers and I'm going to line those kind of up with each other and now we're going to thread on our shell again and from here I am now going to check the depth of my shell and using my pliers I don't want to bend against the shell because um well it could chip I'm just going to bend forward just a bit. I call this a training bend, and most of the stress now will focus in that point. It won't be, whenever we bend it, it won't be happening here on the inside pressed against the shell. And if you've got like a shell or something that's like very sentimental to you, you might want to practice on um, you know, just a kind of a random shell first until you get the hang of it. Okay, so again, coming in. And I'm just grabbing and doing a little bit of that training bend like that. So now you can see how that's holding on to our wires. And from here, I can continue just with my hands bending around. But I'm going to come in and give it a bit of a smush like that. So again, on this side, bending, do you see how that's, since we did that training bend initially, it kind of, you can press it around the rest of the way and it focuses the bend there. And then I'm just coming in with my pliers and smush, not too tight, just bending it, a little smush, there we go. And if it's wiggling around on you, that's okay, that is where the polymer clay comes into play. And so from here again, to bind this off, so that if you wanted to make this without any polymer clay, you could do this as well. Oop. So I'm coming in, giving myself a little bit of space. It doesn't have to be crammed completely up against that other wire. Right there, you can kind of see that gap between my pliers and the rest of it. I just want to bend up like that and grab and whoop it's all right if your pliers slip again that's where if your pliers pinch the wire it's fine we can cover it with polymer clay no one will know okay so I am going to grab my bent nose pliers um just because I can come in and grab and it's way more comfortable for my hands and you know I've been having so many problems with like inflammation up in this part of both of my hands now. I'm having to take a break from learning to play the guitar. Um, and I've been like icing them and stuff. So it's, I'm, I'm doing just enough crafting to be able to get these videos made for our YouTube channel. Um, but other than that, I'm having to take a mega break from crafting uh, to let my hands heal so that I can know if this is, is from playing the guitar or if maybe this is something chronic from, I don't know, crafting every day for the past like almost 20 years. Um, <laughs> so we're going to come in you can see that's not like the best loop on the planet. doesn't need to be because we're, we're not done with it yet. I'm just going to come in and I'm snipping that wire right above. You can see hopefully right where above this wire that's coming across. So again, on here, I wouldn't snip down here because that's not removing enough material. I want to snip right above and you can see how I'm nestling in my wire snips. And so from here, I can take our bent nose pliers and just close that loop. 
or really any pliers, but we're gonna come in and take it and just whoop. That's okay. Just close it. And now, I mean, boom, you just made some jewelry. You put this, like, do it twice. If, if I could find, like, mirrored pieces somehow, um, or at least two that are, you know, look like they could be earrings next to each other. Like, those ones, the sizes are a little too much off for me, but maybe that's your thing. Um, you could put these on ear wires and you're just done. Like, you could do some really cute coiling on this before, um like probably after doing the bends but before attaching the shell and doing that other final wrap around um just to make it easier to do the coiling but uh go ham you know put all, you could do like a whole thing of beads oh going from like really small seed beads to like a three millimeter four millimeter six eight ten like just like a whole halo of like Wow, that would look so cool. Okay, anyways, though, <laughs> so just having ideas, feeling inspired. We're going to get this centered up, and then we're going to come in with our clay, and I'm going to set the cabochon on the front. You don't have to do a cabochon if you don't want, but I kind of just want to boop right there, put a little cabochon. Though I don't know. Yeah, we're going to do a caution. And this is a part where I actually think it's a little easier if you have the epoxy sculpt um, because it's a little stickier. This polymer clay is not particularly sticky. So let's see if we can't zoom in a little bit. I don't want to be wandering out of frame, but I also want you to be able to clearly see what I'm doing. So I've just put on some of that clay and now I'm smushing on our cab. You're really digging that. And then just around here on the edge to make a little bit more of a lip to go around the front of the cab so it didn't just pop out. Like you could leave it like that and then like super glue it or E6000 it in after baking. But I like to have the clay do the hard work of holding the stone in. And I'm just coming through doing a little bit, little bit of that stippling texture. And I currently have my oven preheating to 275 degrees Fahrenheit. If you're using a different brand of polymer clay or something, uh, just follow the, the package's instructions, really. Um, It'll get you where you're going. Now, if you wanted to electroform this, I would recommend just using bare copper wire. Um, and that way you can build up the electroform on it as well. I'd love to do another video. Uh, currently, our electroforming setup is out of out of order. Um, my rectifier, the thing that makes the bzz, bzz, like the electricity go through, uh, isn't working. When I turn it on, it goes like, bzz, bzz, like real loud and shakes. And so I'm like, yeah, I think that's normal. Um, <laughs> so... Anyways, I'm just rolling out a little snake of clay, and I'm gonna, I don't know, like, I, even if I don't know what I'm gonna be doing there, I always do layers of texturing, because it lets me think and kind of get to know the piece just a little bit more, and so I do kind of think that I want to go around with, oh, yeah, that's gonna look pretty cool, okay. And also, if any little bits of what I had previously done uh, show, show through, they are textured now. I don't know. I was kind of digging it, and now I'm like, meh. But, I mean, never know till you try. We can always do that again later, too. So I'm going to take that back off. And let's put a little bit of our scrap wire away, clear out a little bit of space. Hmm... So I'm going to, ooh, now back here on the back side, let's go ahead and add some interesting texture here. Now also, let me grab for you. This is just a six inch glazed ceramic tile that I like to use to bake my pieces on. Um, if, if you watch many polymer clay tutorials, there's a whole lot of different ways of doing this. I've seen some folks, you know, bake their, uh, their pieces on fabric or in cornstarch. That way it doesn't leave any shiny bits on the back. 
I'm not super worried about it, but uh, there's as many different ways to do this as there are people to do it. So uh, find what you like and just do that. And so I'm going to come through and I'm going to texture. Oh, this would be a perfect place to use our wire brush. Look how quick that lays down some texture. Poke, 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 poke. Boom. <laughs> so we did that on one. Let's use this very small stylus tool. And this is a great way to make really nice solid contact with the polymer clay and get it to adhere to the contours of our shell as well. And you could do the same thing using crystals or cabochons or beads or I'm just, man, I'm ready for summer. <laughs> like it's spring was here for like two seconds before it got hot. So I'm like ready to go full mermaid and just go like lay in a waiting pool for <laughs> until fall gets here really um so just going through and adding little little spots and things of texture but now it's wrapped a little bit more around that back so we don't have to worry about the clay popping off and this might be a little bit more of a diminutive piece you know where some of these have quite a bit of clay on them to get everything to attach across the board this one we may not really, since we did the attachment points with the wire, we only really need to add what decorations we want as opposed to, you know, dealing with things structurally. So I'm just going to add a couple little spots and drops. But let's, uh, let's proceed as though it weren't structurally sound, just as is, and if we needed to hide the wire if you or something for some reason. I like to tear it off in bits and then smush it on, like so. That way I don't get too thick in one area, and I can make sure the little bits that I'm adding are making good adhesion. That's a super durable. Smush, smush, smush. This stuff's just so much fun, you guys. Like, it's <laughs> so much folks can get wrapped up in trying to do something perfectly or making it match a vision that they have in their mind. And pieces like this, I find, literally grow. Like, you just keep adding little spots. Yeah keep dropping it and see what happens. <laughs> um, who knows? It'll give it character that you can only get by throwing a piece and seeing what happens. But yeah, and so you can kind of just one little glob at a time build your piece and just see where it takes you. There we go. Oh, you can make little like rice pieces. If you wanted different effects like that, you could take them. Oh, yeah, we're gonna take this and we're gonna roll it out into a little like noodle. I don't know what to call that. Um, but I am gonna go ahead and do a boop there in the center of that one. And then we have our small cedar tool. And we're going to, ooh, you know what else would work really great for this? Okay, if you're a wire wrapper, you may have a tool called a cup burr. Oh yeah, check that out, that's perfect. So yeah, two completely different tools, very similar results. So do not feel like you have to have the same tools as me, y'all, like at all. Um, before I start adding these, I wanna check and make sure, I think I want to add a little bit more texture to this guy over here. I'm just gonna do some more little pokey bits. And I don't mind leaving some little seams and stuff. Um, it just adds to the layers, you know, making it look like it grew like that. Okay. Sorry, I don't know if you, uh, my name, neighbor's car honked so <laughs> I need to get out more okay I don't mean to be blocking the camera and stuff but I'm gonna keep I try to do a whole layer of growth 
um, on the design. Like right now I'm just trying to cover up all of the wire that's wrapped around the shell. That way, you know, if folks look at it and they're like, ooh, how'd you make that? That's kind of fun. Like for me, that's fun. Whenever, you know, I'm at a craft show or something and I'm, you know, walking around looking at other people's booths and stuff, it's really, really intriguing whenever I see a piece and I'm like, oh, I have no idea how they did that. That is so cool. Like, and just, I don't know, how fun. It's like, uh, I'm equally impressed by when people are crocheting and I can't tell how they spliced in the colors and, you know, like, ooh, it's like magic. <laughs> like, you use your crafty magic to hide all the little loose ends. So. There's some kind of storm whooping up outside. That's all right, though. We've battened down the hatches earlier today. We've been expecting storms all day, so. They're just finally getting here. Oh, and I'm not even in frame, goodness. Okay, so we're gonna set that piece. And sometimes if my fingers don't fit, I forget that I can use tools like anytime I want. Like there's no like rule about it. You can just be like, oh, my hand doesn't fit and just use a tool. Like nobody's gonna be like, oh. <laughs> like um, my partner. Actually, my husband. Okay, um, well, it's for the longest time his art teacher in high school, who if you're a long time watcher of the channel, you know our opinion on that person, um, was like, uh, I don't know, would like kind of cut into folks for using their eraser. And it's like the eraser's just as much tool as a pencil, like on making beautiful art. Like there's whole techniques and everything that center around using an eraser. But it's like, I don't know. This teacher had kind of made it out that's like if you didn't get it right the first time it's because you suck <laughs> and no that's not the case <laughs> sometimes i i think uh you know in my unsolicited opinion um sometimes adjusting to the uh-ohs of crafting is an art in and of itself the whole you know embracing the chaos of this is not what we planned but this is what's happening, so let's roll with it and see what happens. Like that whole readjustment of the creative course is the fun part. I mean, it's all fun, but boop, 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 boop. I'm doing this in real time with you guys because there's no telling what's gonna happen. And also I hate editing videos, <laughs> so <laughs> welcome to my TED Talk. Um, oh, and that's, and this is a big reason of why I like to do a whole layer and then start adding finer details is because that got all smushed all the heck. And that's okay. I'm actually just gonna add even more clay on top of it. Smush, smush, smush. There we go. But, uh, to go back to, I do have the oven preheating to 275 right now, and I highly recommend to folks to go ahead and preheat your oven oh we could make it look totally creepy and have it come up through the little we can give it little tentacles of course we're going to give it little tentacles why wouldn't we i mean really hello little tentacle blob and so i'm just going to come in here and we got that placed and you can see i grounded into the back just a bit maybe you can see if i'd stay in frame But uh, if your pieces are scorching, make sure that you're preheating your oven first. And uh, having one of those thermometers that like you can just double check and make sure that your oven is actually at 275. Because oddly, not all ovens are like honest about what temperature they are. So I'm just placing that real, real small, just fine details. And I'm just rolling out a little bit and then tapering whoops, on both of the ends, and then picking it up, and then we're going to lay that there, kind of poke that in to place, and I don't think I'm going to have that one be in the little part of the, uh, the shell. I'm just curling it in a little bit more. I'm going to do one more. 
so rolling it out just making a little grain of rice and then tapering the ends a little bit more and then I'm gonna place that Oop, just bumped my head on the tripod sorry guys and I'm gonna have it be foomp, 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 just coming around And now we can do whoop, some little, I'm going to set that there. And I'm going to make a whole bunch of these little seeds, I guess. I don't know what they would be, the little growths. And then we can come in and go like boop and give them some nice points of attachment. We can make some real wee bitty ones. Take that, use our small cedar or cup burr or pen tip or whatever we have. And we can do just a couple off like the edge to make it look like it's like tapering away in intensity. And so I'm going to build up some more little growths around here on the face of the stone. I'm going to set it down. I'm actually going to use this other shell just to keep the back of it up off of the tile for now. Just because I want to get a couple of these made. And it's easier if you, if you have both hands free. Uh, one more, why not? Now you could also use like little tube bugle beads to make it look like little like an anemones. To make it look like those things in the ocean. So you can go get all kinds of wild and creative with this, you guys. So I'm just going to pick that up and drop it on. Again, let's come through with our cedar and boop, 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 boop. There we go. And so I think that might be actually just pretty good. Like, I don't know, let's do a little bit more. Why not? <laughs> two, three. So we can go like, where's a different cedar? Let's add a little bit of variety, a little bit of variety in our texturing here. So boop, and boop, and boop. So that was a little too big. So I'm gonna come in and boop, boop. Yeah, I'm still just digging these guys so much. There's that. And so now I feel pretty confident that that's going to be enough clay to take care of us, but I do want to add another just a little bit. No, oh, that's what I want to do. Okay, so I'm going to roll this out. And y'all, you can see this is how much clay we still have left. So it's there's there's a whole bunch here. So I'm actually going to take about a pea-sized bit of clay and I'm going to roll that into a ball to get rid of all the seams and now let's roll this out oh that was way more than what I needed probably so we're just rolling and as I roll I move my hands away from each other and this reduces it down into a nice little snake and I'm going to break there like that and just because it got a little too thin at one point. Actually, that's really too thin. Okay, let's start over. <laughs> so we have our little pea-sized bit of clay, and I'm going to smush it together so all that clay is nice and conditioned, has good adhesion to itself, and I want to make like a little chubby spiral. So to do that, I want... There we go. We're going to make this to where it's just 
short and fat. <laughs> like me. <laughs> but, uh, there we go. And now you can see I've made the widest point about right there. And then we're going to roll this in. And you just a stubby little cutie pie. I love it. And we're going to bring that. Whoop, and he comes around. And then I really like that last bit of taper. We're going to kind of poke that in. Oh, and I love that just right there. It might cover up a little bit too much of the shell. Maybe we can put it... Yeah. I don't know. It makes him look like he's wearing like a poop hat. I don't know. Um, oops. <laughs> so sometimes, sometimes you don't know if you're going to love it till you try. And even then you're like, I don't know how I feel about this. And right now, how I've just sat that in, I don't think that would actually stick. So, but I don't know if I want to cover up the shell. So when I come in, and we're going to use our medium ball stylus. And we're just going to get some good adhesion to what was already there. And now, if and you want, and I do recommend this. This is not even the same color of clay. It's I, I used to have some clear stuff, but this is the silver-toned liquid polymer clay. And I like to come in and use this as a like a glue. And I you normally do it right before baking. That way it doesn't roll around too much, but it just takes a very little bit. And this is going to get us a nice adhesion to where we can just sit this piece on there. I'm going to roll it around a bit more. But yeah, we can just set that on there. And now when that bakes, it's like glued together, but we didn't have to smush the heck out of this piece to get that to happen. So I do like that. I like that a lot. So you do how you like on yours and we're going to pop this into the oven and I'm going to bake it for mm, 30 minutes. Like that's overkill. It says I only need to do like what 15, 30 minutes per quarter inch. 30 minutes is perfect. So we might actually bump it up to 45 just because why not. Um, and then I will meet you guys here after that step. Alrighty guys, so we have pulled this from the oven and you can see we have a little bit of that shiny spot on the back So if you don't like that you can bake it on some paper or a bit of fabric or you know something like that And you can see we've got and I'm not being delicate with it. This is on there like I could hook and really rip it off but bless you puppy <laughs> um, So we could and if you want whenever you do like a design like this and it um, is kind of lifted away from there. You can always do like a second or even a third baking. But what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to come through and I'm going to use this Halo Blue Gold Lumiere Paint by Jacquard. I've used this a bunch in other tutorials, you guys. But I just, I love it so much. And I really dig it over this copper uh, clay, like how we're using here. And I'm just putting it on real thick and messy to start with. I'm going to get a little bit of water on my brush so we can glob it on there and get a little bit better of a spread and just glob 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 like I mean literally all over <laughs> so you don't want to be too messy on the shell because it can kind of really stick but I want to show you the cool effect that this paint gives and you can use uh, mica pigments before the clay is baked to kind of rub on there and get like a really cool effect and so, just globbing it in. I know, baby. Sorry, that's our dog is, Z is, has the toy and Millie wants it and Z's distraught. So that's the drama, days of our lives, puppy edition. <laughs> <laughs> You're so dramatic. <laughs> okay, so we're going to keep painting this in. Beep boop. Ugh, okay, I have to go mitigate this, you know, 
their their life is over, just ask them. We'll be back back. For any Bob's Burgers fans out there, there's, gosh, which episode is it? Is it the first episode where he's like, you're all terrible and I'd fire you if I could? <laughs> That's how I feel towards my dogs. It's like, you're the absolute worst at this. <laughs> you did one job, buddy. That's okay, though. I love them. I really do. <laughs> so, just cleaning out my brush and now begins the fun part. And I am going to put this on a tissue because it's going to get messy. I am getting my brush really, really wet, and then I am just going to scrub. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> Normally, I banish my husband and the doggies to the upstairs, but uh, he's helping me make dinner, so that's why we've got, and I don't mind the dogs. Honestly, if you've made it this far into the video, welcome to my home life. My dogs are menaces to society. Okay, so I'm starting to really scrub away with the brush off the surface to expose that little bit of copper underneath. And I really like that this blue cabochon has a little bit of translucence to it because it has a little bit of that copper showing through as well. And so, and I, this is just the paintbrush that I had on hand. It is less than ideal. For doing this I would have gone with a larger brush with stiffer bristles possibly but we can come through and we can try and describe it this this paint really sticks to the clay there we go but see how that's starting to get that color separation I want to zoom back out just a little bit so the color adjust isn't quite so extreme but yep just Wearing away at that paint on the surface and then coming through with our tissue to lift it kind of out. Yeah, actually a baby wipe or something of the sort would be really perfect for this. So, oop. Uh oh, I used dirty paint water. That'll be alright. So, coming through and just really burnishing the surface of our clay to expose, remove the paint and expose that color underneath. And I super duper dig that. And that is, you can seal it with, Sculpey has a glaze. I like any any kind of paint on acrylic glaze works really well. I also really like Mod Podge Ultra is a great sealer. Though lately I've been using Mod Podge Hard Coat. And I would just let this dry completely and then apply a layer of that hard coat. And I've had some folks send me questions because that hard coat does say to let it cure for 30 days. It's fine. It's like in two hours. It's like completely dry. So, I mean, aside from like putting this outside or something, um, it, it really does seem to be just fine uh, to just do a layer or two and then be done. But that is how we make this beginner friendly pendant. Because again, you can attach it like a macrame cord or beaded or anything like that. You could do additional scrolly wire work with like another bead. You could use a polymer clay. Like, let's see. I put my clay away, but I'm going to pull out just a little bit more. Just for demonstration purposes. So we could take this clay or we could even go through with epoxy sculpt. Now that we've done that initial baking. And I'm going to break that in half and we're going to roll this out. But we could make a really nice little snake. And now that it's baked and secured and I'm not having to worry about that wire moving, we can come through and just drape this clay around it and sculpt around that wire and make it look really cool. I do want to take an opportunity to thank our sponsors for this video and that is you guys. Thank y'all so so much for being here, watching our videos, enjoying yourselves. Um, if you are interested in supporting the creation of more free tutorials, uh, consider joining our Happy Crafter Club where we do uh, you know member exclusive live streams on uh, most Fridays. Sometimes when we have like a craft along a thon or something 
um we won't do that but oh my gosh this would look so cool y'all like i think i might do this and just pop it into bake and then y'all can tune in to our upcoming monday shop update because the dogs are wrestling um <laughs> to see how this came out uh after baking kind of a little sneaky surprise but i would just pop it in for another like 30 minutes and then kind of go from there but yeah, there's no reason at all why we can't do that. I might add in a little bit more clay around there. And then we don't even have to paint this. We can just like leave it that copper tone. Oh, I do really like that. Um, but yeah, so tune in to future shop updates or maybe check out our social media. Links are down in the video description. But to see how that comes out. And yeah, thank you to our Happy Crafter Club members, our YouTube channel members, all y'all just for even being here watching this video. I do hope that it was helpful to you. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below um, in the comment area. And we will see y'all next time. So until then, you guys, happy crafting. Mwah! Bye. <laughs>